Welcome to the Life Success and Legacy Podcast. We're super excited. We are taking on a worthwhile endeavor at Life Success and Legacy. Our intention is to honor Nelson Nash, the man, as well as the infinite banking concept. We're going to create a series of resources, including podcasts and text, as a resource for others who want to truly understand with depth and clarity what Nelson shared in his book, Becoming Your Own Banker as well as the many seminars and think tanks that we were fortunate to have attended during his life. So who is this intended audience? Well, we will use Nelson Nash's own words. It is written for the layman, not for financial advisors, but all life agents should be thoroughly knowledgeable of its content and practice. So whether you are an individual, part of a family, a business owner, or a life insurance agent, this is for you. So sit back, relax, and we will walk you through becoming your own banker step by step so you can reference the parts you want to revisit at your own pace. And we might have a little fun along the way. Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you back to our next edition of the Life Success and Legacy podcast. Mike Everett and I are having a ball walking our way through Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. Um we're going to be today actually on page 39. Um, and for those of you who are following along, we highly recommend, especially for our upcoming podcast, because we're going to be getting into the nitty gritty of some details. You're going to want to have that book in front of you so you can follow along. We are in the fifth edition, Becoming Your Own Banker. And um, today we're picking up on the section where it says, my thoughts on universal life and variable life. Uh, Nelson takes a moment to highlight what exactly is universal life and variable life and why he does not recommend those types of policies for creating your own banking system. Um, Mike Everett, how are you today? I am doing just swell and yourself? Well, I'm doing well. It's a <laughs> little gray and rainy this week in uh, yeah. Lawrence, America. So we're ready we to get some, some yeah, sunshine. sunshine. Mm -hmm. We need sunshine bad been kind of a weird spring for sure yeah, the bad the bad thing is when the sunshine comes out my grass is going to grow wildly <laughs> <laughs> just get you out there mowing it that's it yeah so um my thoughts on universal life and variable life i want to start this conversation uh walking through this section by going back to page three it's the first page in the book um and and for those of you who have listened to us uh, on our podcast, you know we reference this quite a bit, but I think it's foundational because it's so easy with the noise that is out there in our financial world to get distracted uh, by a squirrel, and that is on investments. And so if you'll um, turn, if you have your book, if you'll turn to page three, go to the second column and go down to the first full paragraph, and I'm going to read this as a reminder to all of us. This book is not about investments of any kind. It is about how one finances the things of life, which can certainly include investments. It is not about rates of return, okay? So you can use your banking system for investments in those things. And we encourage that when you get to a certain place in your process. But it is not, this book is not about investments. It is about mm -hmm. creating a banking system, which you can then use for your investments. So I, I preface this section by saying that, going back and reviewing that, because we're going to talk about universal life and variable life. Mike, what do, what, first, what are universal life and variable life? And then why did we go back and preface this whole section about it's not about investments? Well, universal life and variable life were, uh, uh, they came into being when interest rates started to increase dramatically. So I originally got into the life insurance business uh, around 1983-84. Um, interest rates were ridiculous. I mean, a, a great deal for... Um, a home mortgage interest rate was like 12 and a half percent during that time. And I remember I had a 12.25 interest rate on my 30 year mortgage. And, and let me tell you, interest rates 
commercial interest rates were somewhere between 18 and 20%. So if you think about how universal life and variable life came into being, they were really what it was, was universal life was a term life insurance policy with a side fund that you could actually utilize for investment purposes. So you got to do a, a, a little bit of kind of explanation. So whole life insurance is really just one bag. You buy the insurance and, and they create the, the product accordingly. But universal life was term life insurance, term, exactly what it sounds like. From point A to point B, you're buying it and you get to buy the term life insurance for a particular term. But then you have a second bag that was the investment bag. And so when interest rates were, you know, 12, 18, 20%, you could actually buy a universal life insurance policy for 25 bucks a month. And I looked at this because I was in my mid, I was literally in my mid 20s. You could put $25 a month in this thing. And when you turn 65 years old, you had something like three to $5 million setting <laughs> in your life insurance plan. Now, that all, set, that all sounds fine and good if interest, rate, if interest rates maintained the level that they were at. But here's the thing interest rates have taken a major, major dive. We're at an all time low. The federal government continues to hold interest, interest rates at, at a low, low level. But yet here we've got the term life insurance and here we've got the investment bag and people were sold this whole idea with the fact that you could put as little as you possibly can in this thing and this thing would grow regardless. But it's a one year term life insurance policy with this investment bag. Well, in all reality, we are getting older. What happens to the cost of a one year term life insurance as we get older? It skyrockets. So as you are in your mid twenties to mid thirties to mid forties, mid fifties, hey, how about mid sixties? What is the cost of term life insurance now? I couldn't afford term life insurance right now. So regardless if it was 25, 50 or 100 or even $500 a month, you still got the cost of this term life insurance going up, up, up. And you've got this investment bag over here. But as the cost of your life insurance goes up and you literally are only putting X number of dollars inside this plan, where are they getting the additional premium dollars for the cost of the universal or variable life? They're going right over to the investment bag. They're dragging it out of here. And they're saying, you know what? We'll just offset the costs. So with interest rates being held historically low right now, I'm just telling you it is a 100% losing cause. And I'm just telling you, when they created this thing, what they tried to do was unbundle. That's the word Nelson used. Unbundle this whole thing so they could actually have a savings element and the life insurance plan. I'm just telling you, now this is me talking out loud. I don't have any reference to this. But now after 30 years in the industry, maybe more, I almost, yeah, mid mid 30s i'm convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that when they created universal life they knew that it would eventually dissolve because you can't sustain that so what ends up happening as you get older whether it's in your mid 40s or mid 50s or mid 60s the insurance company comes back to you and they say oh hey there's not enough money in the investment bag now. So in order to keep this thing alive and keep it in force, you've got to put more money in this thing. So 
Nelson is a, uh, he was a proponent of these things were going to fail from the get go. When I like um, things that are proven and uh, through over years and history. And when we look at this, we know universal life, it says, Nelson says here was invented in the early 1980s. Yep. So, I mean, that's not very long ago. No. But when you look at whole life, whole life's been around for a long, long time. Almost 260 years. And that's why we prefer to work with companies that are focused on whole life. Yep. You know, that, that is their emphasis. They, they know it's tried and true and it's been around for a really long time. So E.F. Hutton has a note, Nelson comments here in the book, he says, you know, it was a, and I remember their commercials when I was oh, yeah. a kid, oh, you yeah. know, back in the eighties, I remember their commercials. And uh, he says, remember when E.F. Hutton speaks, everyone listens. <laughs> and Nelson says, have you heard him say anything lately? They don't exist anymore. No, no. But it's a interesting whole, how. Yeah, a whole bunch of those investment companies have gone by the wayside. Yeah, it's interesting how an investment company tried to get into life insurance by bundling life insurance and investment. And, and to be clear and to be true here, life insurance companies have tried to do the same thing. They've tried to go the other direction is they've tried to take their products and bring in the investment pieces. Yep. Um, I remember I was on a podcast or not a podcast on a, uh, a webinar um, one evening with a company and they were throwing out IBC and all this stuff. And they had this, this specialist as a guest who came in, this specialist. <laughs> and, um, and this person was talking about IBC and using it as a line of credit to, to leverage and use for investments and all those things. And we got about three quarters of the way through and he threw out variable life as, right. the, as the place to store your money. I was like, you had me till then. I'm yep. with the concept. I'm totally with you, but not with the product that you're, you're storing that money in. Right. Like, can you explain the difference between universal and variable? I mean, simply universal being that, you know, it's a savings type of a vehicle, an right. interest bearing account, but variable, what they really did is then tap into the mutual funds. Yeah, that's exactly right. They, yeah. they literally, there, there's more mutual funds than they are stocks. Mm -hmm. So really what they were doing was they were taking advantage of the, of the, uh, I guess, flexibility, I'll, I'll use flexibility of being able to move things around in a mutual fund situation, which then in turn really made it more of an investment than it did real life insurance. And, and uh, you know, we're not opposed to investments. I no, mean, that's where no, we not at all. But but the idea that we propose and Nelson did was have your whole life IBC policy as your warehouse of wealth to quote yep. one of his other books. And from that place, take loans against your policy to go do the mutual fund or the real estate or the peer to peer lending or the real estate, whatever it is that you are into, but don't mix the two. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so Nelson, as he is uh, famous for doing, uh, references a couple of suggestions on books here. He suggests that you read The Truth About Mutual Funds and then read The Battle for the Soul of Capitalism by John Bogle, uh, the originator of the Vanguard Fund. He says these two books are vital to the understanding of what goes on in that industry. Also read The Pirates of Manhattan by Barry Dyke. Um, once you have read these three books, you will have a, <laughs> an adequate, in, in, you'll have enough information to make an intelligent decision as to whether you should consider variable life. We can save you some time and don't do it. <laughs> but if you're a it's reader so and you like to know all that, go for it, it. It's so funny. When I picked up the Pirates of Manhattan, I think it was uh, either seven or 900 pages. I immediately put it right back down and I said, <laughs> this book is not for me. <laughs> yep. I'm just trusting Nelson Nash. That's yeah, it. That's right. That's right. Um, so Nelson, you know, he wraps up this section. He says, you know, it's, it's a shame that we are not all getting educated on how these life insurance policies really work. Um, I actually think uh, one of the companies that we prefer to work with does a really good job if we're willing to dig in and look at the, the resources that they provide. 
and they're always available to us when we have questions. So yep. um, I took the time, not coming from a life insurance background, um, I took the time early on to take some courses through Mutual Trust, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the companies that we recommend. Um, and I thought they did a really fantastic job of explaining how policies uh, are designed and how they work. So yeah. it's out there if you're willing to it, willing to look for it. So, okay, um, Mike, let's wrap up here. Uh, let's flip over to page 40, the review of part two, because then we're going to gear up and we're going to start getting into, I know you'll love this section, um, when we get into how to start building your own banking system, which is part three. But as a review of part two, um, the pitfalls of human behavior, you really focus a lot on that, especially in our boot camps and yep. in, our, in our webinars. Why is that so important to you? Well, because we are human. Um, we, you know, and I'll, I'll just use uh, Parkinson's law on page 28 as a great example. You know, uh, the, the sad thing uh, about Parkinson's law is all three of the things that are that are notated on this page. Work expands to meet the time envelope allowed. A luxury once enjoyed to becomes a necessity. Expenses rise to equal income. All three of these things are real. And Nelson, because of what is going on, because we are so embedded in our life that we go and we learn something like IBC, we get super fired up, excited about it. Yeah. But then we fall back into our old thinking very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so part of the awesome thing about what we do at Life Success and Legacy is we provide the educational model. We provide coaching and then we provide ongoing coaching. That means that we're here to help you think through all of these pitfalls, because let me just tell you, in my lifetime, all of these things are real. Um, I, I'm still a procrastinator. I love luxuries. And if I got extra money, what do I do with it? I spend it. But here's the awesome thing. Because of what I now know about infinite banking, I've put myself in a position to pause for a minute and a half, two minutes, and say, is this the right thing to do? So we have a number of customers, clients, friends now that call us and say, hey, I got X number of dollars. I got a bonus at work or uh, my grandma died and left me money. What do I do with this money? So uh, back to the, the tail end of this chapter, the pitfalls, we're helping people think through the pitfalls of the human factors mm -hmm. and before they actually go out and <laughs> waste their money on something that they maybe shouldn't. Well, natural, natural feeling for me coming from a, from a Dave Ramsey background, yep. you know, is man, if I get extra money and if I've got debt, what do I want to do? I want to go pay that debt off right, right away. And yet I'm kissing that money goodbye. One I have, use. I have gotten one use. I have killed any kind of compounding interest. So, yep. Um, Nelson, uh, the, the last two uh, on the review um, is really about the design of the policy, which I think my, this is Chris Bay's opinion. What I think are the, the golden uh, nuggets that Nelson brought to the table is number one, the design of the policy to make it more advantageous for banking. Yep. and applying and teaching banking concepts. And mm -hmm. that's really what Nelson's talking about here is how to design the policy, which we've gone into great detail. And then what are the benefits of thinking long-term and what these policies will do for you? So good stuff, Mike Everett. Uh, great, I hope Chris. you ate your Wheaties this morning because we're gonna be digging into uh, part three, how to start building your own banking system. <laughs> Perfect, I can handle it. For our listeners, uh, we want to thank you for joining us. Um, we're having a ball going through Nelson's book. It's, it's really fun for us and keeps us sharp. And we're happy to share this information with you. Please check out our uh, website at lifesuccesslegacy.com for additional podcasts. Um, we have resources, learning materials. We have a learning kit um, that is helpful. Uh, obviously, Nelson's book. 
um, and we have webinars and boot camps uh, that we'd love for you to join us. We, we encourage people to come and join us on a Monday night webinar. And then we do periodic uh, uh, boot camps that go way deeper into IBC. So thanks for joining us and uh, catch us on our next podcast. Thank you.